One of the ways that you will know ultimately that you get stoichiometry is when you start to be able to have this, this, this sort of facility with taking measurable amounts that are presented to you and converting it into something that is based on stoichiometry. So I want to give you an example of this in action. I don't expect you to be here right now, but I want you to appreciate how it is that I can use stoichiometry, in this particular case a compositional stoichiometry problem, to answer a question that you might have thought was completely beyond you. So what I'm going to show you right here is known as a can of soda. There's my can of soda, and that can of soda is uh, 455 milliliters. You can see it down in the lower right hand corner. That's 455 milliliters of soda sitting in that can and I'm going to ask you a crazy question. How many hydrogen atoms are in that can of soda? Just think what I just asked. I just, I just asked you to pick up that soda that you probably have right there next to you to the left say, how many hydrogen atoms are in there? Believe it or not, I've actually taught you enough at this particular point that if you could combine that with some common sense would allow you to relatively quickly get to the correct answer. So let's watch and see what happens. Notice as I do this, I'm going to start making some estimations, making some, some approximations. And it may bother some of you as you sit here listening to this because you were taught in high school to pull that calculator out and make sure you do everything to the nearest third or fourth or fifth significant figure. But the truth is that I am not going to need to be able to measure these for most of the experiments I do, for most of the knowledge I need to have to the nearest third or fourth or fifth or sixth um, significant figure. And so estimations actually aren't a bad thing to use at all. So watch this one. I know that this is a can of sugar water. That's basically what soda is. It's sugar water. But I also know that sugar water is in fact mostly water. The sugar makes up maybe 10% of the water, uh, of the can. So I'm going to say first and foremost that this is actually a can of water and that the hydrogens coming from the sugar are relatively insignificant in this, in this argument. So now I have 455 milliliters of water. You know what 455 milliliters of water is? <laughs> it's actually about 500 milliliters of water. Why did I make it 500 milliliters of water? Because I don't have a calculator. Now that I have 500 milliliters of water, I might ask myself, how do you get from milliliters of water into this amount of compositional stoichiometry? Oh, that's right. He talked to us about using something called density. But the density of water is something we all know. The density of water, we're taught in the seventh grade, is one gram per milliliter. So I am going to use density to convert 500 milliliters into 500 grams of water. So there I am using density to do that. I now know that that um, uh, can of soda water is actually about 500 grams of water. And then from there, I can take advantage of the fact that water is 18 grams per mole. Well, if I know that it's 18 grams per mole and there are 500 grams, I can do an easy bit of math in my head to convert from grams into moles. In fact, I'm going to make this really simple on myself. And again, you're going to hate yourself for having to follow along like this. But since I don't have my calculator, I'm going to say that the number 18 is the number 20. Because I can divide 20 into 500 pretty easily. If there are 500 grams and 20 grams per mole, this suggests that there are approximately 25 moles of water in that container. Well, if there's 25 moles of water sitting in that container, approximately, then I'm getting pretty darn close to knowing the number of hydrogen atoms. I should point out, by the way, that as I'm making these estimates, there's this kind of neat thing. Notice that this estimate, I went a little high, and that when I did this division, I went a little low. Everything's tending to cancel each other out, so that I'm going to end up with a pretty good number when I'm through. All right, I've got 25 moles of water. You know that 25 moles of water will turn out, because there's two hydrogens for every one mole of water, to be about 50 moles 
of hydrogen. So I know that that container has about 50 moles of hydrogen. But wait, a mole of hydrogen is 6 times 10 to the 23rd hydrogens. And since I have 50 of those, the actual answer is 50 times 6 times 10 to the 23rd, which is about 300 times 10 to the 23rd, or 3 times 10 to the 25th atoms of hydrogen. All right, this is pretty crazy. I started this little exercise right here at the beginning of introducing you to stoichiometry because I want you to see how real scientists think when they're doing this stuff. Here I am confronted by the problem, how many atoms of hydrogen are in a can of soda? I was able, in my head, to say, oh, I don't know, about 3 times 10 to the 25th, and you know what, that number is actually pretty darn close to correct. Is it off by maybe a factor of two here or there? Perhaps, but this gives me a nice ballpark idea of exactly how many hydrogens are sitting in there. I did it by starting off with something I could measure. Actually, they had it written on the label, a volume. And I went through a series of conversions, volume into mass, and then mass into moles, and then I went through the compositional stoichiometry and then came out the other side converting moles into Avogadro's number and I had my answer. Now as you look at this, you might say, it looks messy, it looks like I'm not sure what steps to use next. And in fact, if you're not used to doing stoichiometry or if it's been a while since you've done it, you probably don't know the what step comes next as you do the problem. And that's why what I'm about to show you is a very systematic strategy for being able to take it on. But when you're all done, I hope you come back to this problem and work it yourself. Work it yourself exactly if you'd like. Work it yourself taking into account the amount of hydrogens in water and the amount of hydrogens in sugar. Carry it through with a calculator. Do all that work. And you know what you're going to find out? You're going to find out you have an answer pretty close to 3 times 10 to the 25th anyway. But you can do it both ways. You can do estimates in your head, you can do exact calculations on a calculator, and you get a feel for how it is that scientists and engineers operate when they engage the real world and ask questions in it. And this is a lovely example of me having compositional stoichiometry tools available to find the answer to a question that I'm sure all of you have always wanted to know.